Dear Mama, it has been a short two weeks while running Lit Film Fest classrooms, but I have made so many friends. There have been so many positive comments and likes and subscribing going on. But I have a deep fear, one that I am not willing to share with anyone. <laughs> However, I baked a cake today and it was scrummy. Anyway, the lesson's about to start. Love you. Kiss, kiss. Hello everyone and welcome to Lit Film Fest Classrooms where we make a feature length film over seven weeks. Welcome to week three. If you haven't seen the last two weeks, check out the playlist below and it'll take you whoop, whoop, back in time. You'll learn how to introduce your characters and write a letter to get your story going. So this week we're looking at diary writing. You're going to be making your choices for the next part of your adventure. Together we'll plan, draft and edit our diary based on your choices that you make for your story. We'll then think about how you film that, how you can create freeze frames. That's me in danger. No! You'll then think about freeze frame images for your diary and then we'll record your diary as a voiceover. But first, I'm yeah, just going to ask just gonna ask a little question, just going to put it out there. Do you know how to write a diary? Do you know what the features are for a diary? That's my tiny question for the day. So let's continue reading chapter two of El Dorado. And while we do this, you might want to think about what makes a good diary. El Dorado chapter two, Pirates of the Caribbean. Captain's Log, Solomon Clegg, the Jolly Flobber. Day 28. This has taken far longer than I expected. We've been stuck in the doldrums for almost a week. No wind, no waves. My crew, the Jolly Flobbers, are a ragged, dishevelled bunch with an unusually slightly unpleasant smell. We had a Morris dance to cheer ourselves up. What a whiz piper! We danced to Birmingham Bert's accordion. Shame about his wooden leg. He was such a marvellous mover. And waved our hankies high above our heads. Doncaster Dave. He would forget his head if it was loose. Had forgotten his, so he waved two pairs of my dirty underpants. Luckily, he didn't have to blow his nose. Day 29. Slumzookle. We're moving at quite some speed now. Our one-eyed navigator, Aberdeen Angus, is jumping around the top deck as if his kilt was on fire. He's totally barking mad. He's yelling in his Scottish accent. Shoreline birds! That means we'll see land soon. Clever old Angus, we can always rely on him. He found the way wearing an eye patch. For blindfold next time, I say. Day 30. We have an even happier ship today. Around midday, Welsh Walter hollowed Land Ahoy from the crow's nest. Excited, astounded, fascinated, we watched as islands seemed to appear from nowhere, like sandy jewels floating in a bright blue sea. We can get fresh water now instead of this green soup we've been drinking from the barrels. Maybe we'll even find some of those exotic fruits Columbus often talked about. Anything would be better than Irish Ian's potato stew. Day 31. Anchored in a bay, we set a small boat to shore to fetch water and bananas. Bananas are amazing. They are bright yellow and so easy to chew. Liverpool Larry was delighted as he has no teeth. I'm pleased for the old boy, but I must confess I can hardly understand a word he says. Another ship sailed close by and waved cheerfully. They seemed like a friendly bunch. What spiffing red beards the crew had. Solomon's idea of friendly was soon questioned with a capital Q. Night watchman, Newcastle Nick, broke the gentle, peaceful Caribbean silence with a lusty, ear-busting ah! One of his tattooed arms had been chopped off by the sharp blade of Billy Barbosa. The red-bearded, notorious and rather grisly chief pirate of the Caribbean. His entire bloodthirsty crew, who were notorious in these parts, were boarding the Jolly Flobber. Solomon Clegg and his men dressed quickly, armed themselves to the teeth and ran up to the top deck to repel the pirate invasion. Get the lily-livered dung munchers into the drink with a lot of them, roared Solomon. Screams filled the air as cutlasses cut and daggers dagged. Teeth left mouths, fingers took flight, and pirate followed pirate. Legs and arms thrashing wildly into the ever-reddening water. 
keep this up, flobbers. We have them on the run, yelled Solomon Clegg with great delight. Suddenly, above the din, red-bearded Billy Barbosa thundered, No more! Instantly, everyone spun to face him. Silence. He dropped his sword with a loud clang. Barbosa's pirates, well, what was left of them, did the same. Kill these men, shouted Aberdeen Angus. This man with a red beard is one of Barbosa's brothers. They are bad men, slave traders. They capture Africans and sell them to the highest bidder. That may be so, my Scottish chum, Solomon countered calmly. But we are the jolly flobbers. We have manners and dance with hankies. We will spare them as long as they apologise and promise never to do it again. Taking off his bag, which was hung around his broad shoulders, Barbosa produced a bottle. He dragged the filthy, broken cork from its neck with his yellow, crooked teeth. As a peace offering, he offered the bottle to Solomon, who politely drank. Mm, sorry, said Billy Barbosa with a sly grin, crossing his fingers behind his back. We, uh, we won't do it again. Barbosa signalled to Solomon to pass the bottle around the rest of his crew. They shared the kind of offering until there wasn't a single drop left. Solomon Clegg woke alone. He felt rough. His eyes smarted and his head banged. He was in a small, dark room with wooden floors and walls. The door was locked. The faintest of light crept through a tiny window. Squinting, he could just about make out water and land. He was a prisoner in a strange ship docked in a bay. Oh, Barbosa! he croaked, his mouth as dry as a dead rat in a desert. What a rum so flea-bitten, scurvy-infested rogue! I must get out of this hellhole. He reached into his secret pocket, and to his relief, found the precious map that would lead him to the lost city of gold. My adventure's only just begun. I must escape and be the first to reach El Dorado. Oh, die trying. So what were the features of that diary? What did you spot? But Solomon's diary here talks a lot about expectations and thoughts and details. He doesn't go through his whole day, that's really important. He just picks the best bits and the parts that are important to him and the main part of that day. So he doesn't talk about waking up and what he had for breakfast. He kind of summarizes his day. The very first thing he says in day 28 is that this is taking much longer than he was expecting. And then he goes into that day by talking about there being no wind or no waves and the feeling of being stuck. Diaries are a lot about how you feel. They're a lot about what you're thinking. So make sure that when you write yours or when you're thinking about that, you're writing down your thoughts. Also, this is written very informally. Diary writing is a really great way to write because there's not a lot of pressure. You can write like the character would speak or think. It's literally trying to get their thoughts down on paper. So sentences don't have to be long, they don't have to be complicated, and they can con contain strange words like, you can see in the middle there, what a whizpiper. What do you think that means, a whizpiper? You can even invent your own words. It all depends on how your characters think. So in today's session, you're going to be planning the next four diary entries which tell us the next part of your story. And they're all going to follow this structure. How do they travel to their destination? What problems do they run into when they arrive? How do they feel about this problem? And how do they deal with the problem? So that's what a short example so you have ideas to magpie from. Dear Diary, today has been a wonderful day. You won't believe what happened. My day started in a plane, zooming through the clouds, flying to Colombia. As the plane landed, I walked into a beaming hot sun. All of a sudden, a colossal guard whacked me over the head with a bat. Then, violently, they dumped me into a Rage Rover. I was driven to a dark prison. They said, your great-grandfather, Solomon Clegg, has stolen the gold. They threw me into a cell, and while I slept, I heard jangling keys. It was a god. He yelled, follow me. He told me to fly to the Amazon. He gave me a map and said, go now and find the truth. What a day, right? On day one, they're traveling to this 
the destination that you've already been thinking about from your letter. How do they get there? Are they going to use a secret vehicle that they have, or are they going to walk? Or even take public transport, which might take longer than walking. And because we're thinking about a diary entry, what are their thoughts and ideas about this journey? Is it dragging on for a long time, just like Solomon Clegg's journey did? For day two, we've thought about our group being kidnapped, but of course you can come up with something else, a, a totally different idea. You could meet a giant monster in the, in the forest, or be chased by demons. It's absolutely up to you, just make sure that it fits in with your story and where you're going, and your theme. So day three, our group spent the night as hostages, which of course you can use, but maybe day three is dealing with that problem and the thoughts and processes of, of, of how they get over being chased day and night by, by wolves. Or maybe, maybe there's a spy in the group and one of them has sabotaged their method of getting to the destination. What do they do on day three if they're stranded in the middle of nowhere? And day four, resolve the problem. So our group escaped from prison. How do they escape? How do yours get over the problem? All we'd like you to do today is, is simply write down the main ideas for each day. What are their hopes, fears, thoughts, and feelings? You can choose to do four days. That's probably a good number, but if you do want to do more, go for it. Don't forget you'll be writing a diary entry in full, a good paragraph full, for each day. So make sure it's manageable for you. Send in your ideas, we'd love to see them on the Twitter at LitFilmFest or on the old email. Email. Ooh, an email. Ah, an electronic mole. Or send them to us via email, info at litfilmfest.com. Or you can share them on our Facebook page, Lit Film Fest Classrooms. Okay, so this week we have so much to share in our community corner. Miss Turner's sent in some great work from her class, hashtag Aberdeen Learns. You can see some great DD sentences there. Here's a jokester, colon. He regularly tells jokes to people who don't find them funny. Louis is intimidating, colon. He can scare people just by glaring at them. We'll be seeing some more of what you've written a bit later. Next up, we've got some really interesting metaphors from our lesson with Emma Ray. Helpful as a bee, echo friendly, loves to garden. He's a sweet dandelion looking after the plants. Nervy, always looking for a challenge as he challenges himself. And if you just look down the side, it's an acrostic. So it says Henry there. So that's a great acrostic metaphor poem. Fantastic, thanks for sending that in. Up next, we've got some great work from Galloway Island. Sent in back from his teacher. You can see we've got some more character work there. We've got Louise, Tom and Lauren. Lauren Fitzmaurice is the posh, lavish, full of a self-group member. <laughs> Lauren, doesn't do, Lauren doesn't do the most in the group. She is always finding excuses not to do jobs such as, Oh, it's too dangerous or no, I can't, it's too hard. Although she doesn't do much, the tiny bit she does is help document and record the encounters the group have. Lauren has a very famous YouTube channel called Lauren Wow Glam. You must subscribe to that. This is where her skills are shown. Lauren, Lauren is extremely talented at making up all other things to do with this area of styling. Great work, thanks for sharing that. And again, we've had some more work sent in about characters. Roseco is the team's Dalmatian dog. He does everything with the squad, for example, the group went out to dinner and even Rosco went. Oh, lots of energy in that. So many dogs going into these groups. F fantastic, great work. And now on to our letters. So people are starting to send in their letters from week two's work. Here we have Dear Mystery Incorporative Detective Agency. My name is Dylan. I am the world's best master criminal. I'm so successful that you probably have never heard of me. In my travels, I came across a story about a map that would lead to the city of gold. My investigations led me to believe that this story is true. I have seen this map and it makes no sense to me. I have the knowledge and skills to steal this map and with your detective skills, we should be able to find this lost city. My proposal is that I steal the map and then come with you when you use your detective skills to unravel the mystery to find the gold. We shall become super rich with more money than you could ever imagine. I've hidden a clue for you to find me. Let's see how clever you are. Oh, I love that. You twisted our story a bit by actually making sure that we have to find the best criminal mastermind in the whole world. So, yeah, very clever. Great. Looking forward to seeing what happens next. And this is great work from Freya again. She's written from the president of Brazil and he wants his country to be a major tourist destination. 
It's been a real pleasure to see you all on Lit Film Fest Classrooms today. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow at 10.30 on Lit Film Fest Classrooms. Love you all. Bye. Shoreline birds! <coughs>